Hi, Sai, everyone. Rob Kajiwara here, continuing to try to answer your questions. Every day I've been getting hundreds of comments and messages and sometimes questions from so many of you, and I thank you all for, for your inquiries. I'm sorry, I just haven't been able to reply to them individually, all of them, anyway, just due to the sheer volume that I've been getting. But I'm trying to answer as many of the frequently asked questions that I've been getting as possible. And uh, I've been getting a lot, okay? So I'm, I'm working on it as best I can, okay? Now the question I wanted to address today is, was Okinawa or the Ryukyu Kingdom, was it a part of China? Was it invaded or owned by China? Ryukyu, as it's known, Okay, Okinawa is just the the largest of the Ryukyu Islands, okay? There's there's a lot of Ryukyu Islands. There's like over 100, okay? Um, Okinawa just happens to be the largest and the most populated of those islands. So Ryukyu is actually um, the more proper term, but Ryukyu is actually a Japanese pronunciation. The proper pronunciation is actually Lu Chu. That's the original Luchuan or Okinawan pronunciation and I'm I'm much more comfortable speaking Okinawan than I am speaking Japanese. Uh, Ryukyu is actually kind of hard and awkward for me to say so I would much rather say Luchu. Um, it's what I normally say um, outside of these videos. Um, so if you don't mind uh, I'm going to be saying Luchu uh, throughout this video. So Lu Chu and China have a very long history. Their history goes back at least 2,300 years. That's right, 2,300 years, if not more. And China and Lu Chu have always been on very friendly and peaceful terms. Uh, they have always gotten along very well. Um, they've never fought. <laughs> there has never been a single... Uh, known incident of conflict between the two never in in 2300 years there's never been a single conflict between the two can you imagine that there's been no wars no battles nothing okay because the Lu Chu is a very peaceful country Lu Chu abolished weapons hundreds of years ago because they just want peace they want they don't like violence they want everyone to to get along you know they believe that they can solve problems non-violently so they abolished weapons a long long time ago and lu chu has always had a great deal of respect for their neighbors china as you probably know throughout most of its history china has been just a, a hugely pro prosperous country for most of its history it was the uh, largest most powerful and most successful country in East Asia and definitely one of the most powerful countries in the world okay it's had so many golden ages and uh, successful dynasties so Lu Chu historically really wanted to be good friends they wanted to be on good terms with China because they knew how um, how successful of a country China was. And Lu Chu, you know, being a small island nation, um, they wanted to partner with China and, and conduct trade with China. And this trade between Lu Chu and China was very, very prosperous for Lu Chu. It was prosperous for China too, but considering that China was just so huge a country and they're trading with so many different people, um, you know, China's China's trade with Lu Chu was was prosperous. It was good for China, but um, it was even better for Lu Chu. Okay, Lu Chu capitalized so much off of their trade with China. Um, whatever they gave China, China gave them back two or three times more. So, you might have heard that historically Lu Chu was a tributary state or a vassal state of China. And this is true. However, that term, tributary or vassal state, means something totally different 
in ancient China than it did in the ancient or medieval European world. Okay, tributary or vassal state in European history means something more like they were kind of an indentured ser servant of a larger country. They were kind of owned and kind of almost like a slave of a larger country. That's the European um, meaning. But the, the a East Asian or the Chinese meaning was totally, totally different, okay? It was um, a relationship between equal, sovereign countries, independent nations, okay? So a tributary state of, Ch of ancient China was not owned or conquered by China at all. That's not what it ha what it meant. It meant that they just would offer China um, a tribute. You know, they would they would give China willingly. They would willingly give China uh, some gold or resources, whatever whatever they had. They would give them a, a nice large offering. Okay. And in return, China would also give them a large offering of whatever China had. And, you know, China had porcelain, they had silk, they had so many other things. So a lot of countries around China historically really, really wanted to be tributary states with China because they wanted the Chinese goods, um, and including Lu Chu. Lu Chu got in on that as well. Lu Chu really wanted to be good friends with China and uh, so that they could, you know, share in China's wealth. So Lu Chu, like many other countries in, in Asia at the time, would give China some of its resources, like uh, they would give shells, they would give Lu Chu horses, which were very good horses and highly valued by the Chinese. Um, they would give them lacquerware. They would give them some other uh, resources that they received from other trade partners, like uh, from Japan or Korea or Southeast Asia, the Philippines, uh, Indonesia. Oh, and they would give them Luchu sulfur. Sulfur. Luchu um, does have sulfur, and China needed the sulfur for its. Um, gunpowder and you know fireworks and things like that so that's what luchu would give china and in return china would give luchu silk and porcelain and uh just so many other things tea um and so luchu really really valued this relationship with china so that's what a tributary relationship meant back in those days in East Asia in, in with China. And Korea did the same thing. Korea had a very similar relationship with China that Lu Chu did with China. And many other uh, Asian countries did the same. Japan did not because Japan um, had its own had its own thing going on. Japan did not want to acknowledge the Chinese emperor because Japan has its own emperor, right? So as part of the tributary relationship, basically a country had to basically pay homage to the Chinese emperor, a show of respect to the Chinese emperor. And in return, that the Chinese emperor would show respect to the king or queen of you know, the nation. So uh, Lu Chu would show respect to the Chinese emperor and the Chinese emperor would show respect to the king of, of Lu Chu. That's how it worked. And so it was, you could see, it was an equal relationship. China w did not own Lu Chu. They did not invade, never once, okay? China always respected Lu Chu. China referred to Lu Chu, actually, as Great Lu Chu. Can you believe that? China, the greatest nation on earth for most of its history, and at, at least the greatest nation in East Asia for most of its history, okay? In China... With all its riches, all its wonders and glories, they built the Great Wall, the Forbidden Palace, the Terracotta Soldiers. For all of its wealth and power, they called Lu Chu great. Let that sink in 
for a moment. It, they called Okinawans, they called Uchinanshu great. Okay, they called us great, guys. That's how highly China thought of Luchu. They had a lot of respect for Luchu, even though we were a small country, just a small island nation. They respected us. Can you believe that? So if you're familiar with the traditional Okinawan song, Toshin Doi, it's, 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 a, it's a really old traditional song, but it's played still to this day at Uchinanshu or Okinawan events all over the world because it's still a really popular song. It's like the traditional uh, kachashi, you know, the the closing song for a lot of parties and, and things like that. That song, Toshindoi, okay, it literally means the Chinese ship is coming, okay? That's what it's about. The song is about when people in Okinawa, they would wait and hope and pray for the, the ship from China to to come to Okinawa safely and they would when they would see the ship approaching they would get really excited and that's when they would play the song because because they knew of all the wealth all the blessings that that ship was bringing to Okinawa so that's that's the history of that song that's what it means and Uchinanshu around the world we still play that song to this day all the time so yes and that was the relationship between china and luchu historically uh so yes luchu was a tributary state of china in the sense that they gave china tribute and they acknowledged the the chinese emperor but in return china gave luchu a lot they gave luchu way more they gave luchu two to three times more than whatever luchu gave them and that's why Luchu loved them. <laughs> Luchu, Luchu wanted to go to China. They sent trade missions to China. They sent tribute missions to China like all the time, as mu as much as they could, as often as they could, because they knew <laughs> what China was going to give them uh, in return. Um, and that was kind of China's way of like kind of flaunting its its power and its wealth. And hey, it did a good job. It helped Luchu out. It helped a lot of other countries out too, like Korea. And so, you know, <laughs> it worked out well for, for both sides, I think. China got the, uh, I don't know, prestige that it, it wanted from other nations. And in return, other nations got a lot of wealth from China. So, um, so yeah, you can see it was a equal relationship. It was a relationship between equals, between China and Luchu. China never once harmed Luchu and never once infringed upon Luchu's sovereignty. Never once. Uh, China just had so much respect for Luchu and Luchu had so much respect for China. And so, um, yeah, I, I hope that answers that question. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are a pro Abe supporter of right wing extreme Japanese nationalists who hates China and hates the Uchinanshu people, uh, I can tell you right now, you're not gonna like any of these videos that I'm making. You're not gonna like them at all. So you might as well just, uh, you know, I mean, you probably you might not want to be watching this channel because uh, you're not gonna hear anything you you want to hear. Okay. <laughs> just just I'm just letting you know <laughs> but uh, for everyone else <laughs> yeah please please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it if you want to see more videos like it uh, please subscribe to our channel and if you like please leave us a comment down below underneath the video doing things uh, doing th these things just helps us better promote our message across the internet so again thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys next time